Yes, Cody, I will do what you say. I will let you win HOH. I will let you control my vote. I will roll over and die so you can redeem yourself from not taking Victoria and guaranteeing the easiest win we'd ever seen. Whoa, what happened there? Bah, sheep and sheeple internet. My name is Pretium and let's talk about the most powerful winners in all of Big Brother. Now I've said this before and I will say it again, power isn't entirely tangible. It's not as simple to measure as winning comps or tallying jury votes, but a good combination of wearing the key, casting the correct vote and having a silver tongue goes a long way toward rising to the top. So here's the cream of the crop, starting with number five. What I'm good at, I'm good at a lot of things. Because <laughs> I'm very strong in my brain. I'm like a messiah for the newbies. Like a well-oiled machine steamrolling as far as the eye can see, my number five is the co-leader of one of the most dominant alliances we've ever seen. And that is Hayden Moss from Big Brother 12. Yeah! Two left feet over here. Ah. I told you that already. Ah. I can't dance at all. Hayden got two left feet, man, when he dances. This kid can't dance for nothing. To save his life, this kid can't dance. Four HOHs, a POV, and a half milli in a pear tree. Hayden was the first HOH of the season, helped put together the brigade, and then each brogade extended their reach by including a parachute duo with four other players in the cast. Hayden had Kristen, his spider-eating showmance, and while the two of them were targeted early for eviction, the sights were set on Kristen over Hayden, because he had the brigade working in his corner to keep his name out of others' mouths. But more than that, Hayden was a major contributing factor towards turning on Matt, the brains of the operation, and alongside Enzo and Lane, was ready to clip one of his own before the endgame. Once the jury started forming and Rachel left, Hayden then buddies up to Brendan and had him take the shot against Matt, even though it did miss due to the diamond POV. But still, Hayden had multiple parachute alliances, was in the innermost core of the brigade, and won the most comps in the end, being unevictable at the final six, four, and three. All of this adds up to him being in my top five and debatably even higher. Brigade, day two, day two, we came together. We formed this, you know, alliance called the Brigade and I have no clue what a Brigade is. This is what we've been working towards this whole game. I have two knucklehead Brigade members standing between me and 500 Gs. I win this final HOH and I'm golden. Congratulations, Hayden. You are the final. <laughs> two votes. Hayden, two votes lane. I'm realizing I'm putting these in the wrong boxes, so I'm gonna just casually switch them now. You get the point. And the winner of Big Brother is, congratulations, Hayden. Number four. And yeah, I, uh, I considered having Hayden at number four, but decided to swap him with this next winner. Like another well-oiled machine steamrolling as far as the eye can see, my number four is Xavier Prather from Big Brother 23. With three HOHs, three POVs, and a 750K 9-0 blow jury vote in a pear tree, I think it's easy to understand why X is this high. Similar to Hayden with the Brigade, X was a part of the Cookout Alliance, a six-person unit that also had parachute duos across the cast, so each member would have a safety net in the event that they and their buddy were nominated together. Other than maybe Chata, X was the most cool, calm, and collected of the CO. He kept a rational head on his shoulders, kept his emotions in check, and always did the best of anyone to juggle multiple allies eating out of the palm of his hand. He also had the Kings team working with him with Alyssa and Christian and SB. He had the Royal Flush, he had the Cookout, but I think more than anything else, it was his subtle gameplay to have his agenda above the others in the CO come to fruition that kept him one step ahead. Xavier's strong connections with Big D, Aza, and eventually Kylan would be the most important of this season as he was able to rally them against Tiffany from the final Eight onward. BB23 was shaping up into a cookout civil war, and once it got down to the final eight, and then seven, and finally six, it turned into a battle of T versus X, and once X won Kylan to his side, all it took were some clutch comp wins to guarantee his road to victory. Welcome to the cookout. <laughs> I was definitely the glue that kept the cookout together. I was able to help the group stay strong, stay together, and stay focused on the mission at hand. Throwing competitions early on in the game was essential to maintaining a low threat level. However, 
I did also want to win an HOH early on to establish with the rest of the house guests that, hey, this is someone who you can trust whenever they're in power. Congratulations, Xavier. Yeah! You are the new head of household. Equally need each other to make it to the final two chairs. I want to, and I think you want to. Yeah, the gentleman it is. With all these deals in place, it was time to get out my biggest threat. Tiffany, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Carolyn's a big threat, and when it came time for me to take that shot, I took it. Walk. And I made a promise to my brother when he was still living that as long as I was around, his son would want for nothing if I had anything to do about it. At this stage of the game, losing is not an option. Congratulations, Xavier. <laughs> you are the winner of Big Brother. Number three, like a well-oiled machine steamrolling as far as the eye can see, running on the oil of friendship and fuming at the loss of their king with one HOH and one POV and a cappy and a pear tree. Number three is Maggie Osborne from Big Brother 6. And if I'm being honest, I probably should take back the whole steamrolling bit for her. Her alliance known as the friendship didn't really steamroll. If anything, Big Brother 6 was the total opposite of that as the two major factions in the house, the friendship and the sovereign six, were constantly trading HOHs each week like a ping pong match fueled by alcohol and pettiness. It took until week three for Maggie to truly come alive in the game, but whew, once she did, all bets were off. She lost her number one ally, Eric, that week and felt like she now had just nothing to lose. She rounded up half the house, gave themselves a name, and from there, it was all out war. Arguably the biggest mistake the Sovereign Six made that season was evicting Eric over Maggie, especially given what was about to go down two weeks later. Maggie evicted Kaser in week four as a tit for tat, but the following week was one of the biggest strokes of power in this season and one of the most impacting individual moves we've ever seen in all of Big Brother. She convinced Howie, the HOH, to take out James, crippling the Sovereigns, reducing their numbers in the jury, and guaranteeing someone from her alliance would win so long as one of them reached the final two. And Maggie continuously proved to be the leader of that pack, holding the fraying relationships together, preventing them from taking shots at each other. We saw many disputes and fallouts occur between the friendship, but Maggie was always there to bring them back and keep them in check. She got Jennifer to target who Maggie wanted to go re-evicting Kaser. Everyone is most afraid of Maggie's ability to play, but she either cuts deals or pushes others ahead of her as shields that keeps her from being targeted. She picks up April at the final six to give her a duo partner, but then throws the HOH at the final five to win over Yvette, fueling a feud between Yvette and April that pays off at the final four when Yvette takes Maggie to the final three. But perhaps one of the most unique stats as of this video is that through every season of Big Brother over two decades, Maggie Maggie is the only winner to not win part one or part two of the final HOH and get taken to the final two and win the game. Because she worked her alliance to keep her at all costs, all season, and Yvette stuck to their deal. Just as April would have, just as Bo would have, just as Jennifer would have, despite it costing them their game. Don't you worry about me. There's a whole side to me that no one in this house has seen and they will see if you are gone and I am still in here. They think that they have gotten rid of the stronger player, and I think they have way underestimated the, uh, the strength of Maggie. Maggie, I think one of the things that I find so annoying strategically about you is that I can't read you. How unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Maggie, the only scary person on that team. Now that Eric's gone, Maggie's obviously taken over. She has the rats to her control. The friendship consists of myself, Bo, Yvette, Jennifer and April. You win, Maggie. You won. You won, Maggie. So that was all me? Good job. A lot of what I do with Yvette and April is not agree or disagree, just be a listener. I'm gonna take you, you know that, and you know Yvette will take you. I win, I take Maggie. Janelle wins at the final, she takes Maggie. It's a win-win situation for Maggie. She's gonna go to the final two. Yvette and Maggie, congratulations for making it to the final two. I think I made it this far in the game because of the loyalty I had to a certain amount of people and I never crossed over that loyalty. Maggie possessed all the qualities because she didn't make it personal and she did step up to play at times. She bonded your group. I think she played a phenomenal game. Congratulations, Maggie. You are the winner of Big Brother 6. Number two. And honestly, it makes more sense to reveal the top two at the same time. So here we go. Also, number one. 
Between eight HOH wins, four POVs, leading to two of the most dominant alliances we've ever seen in a pair tree. Both of these players winning the game quite decisively and being the front runner for pretty much their entire season, for both seasons. You'll likely know who the top two are the moment I reveal just one of them. My top two most powerful Big Brother winners are Derek Lavasser and Cody Calafiore from Big Brother 16 and 22. The Hitmen, the most successful duo in Big brother eclipsing chill town after bb22 cody holds the record for highest comp win percentage overall through multiple seasons highest average placement and really what should i say that those seasons didn't already show us to know this was gonna be the top two unlike boston robin survivor who ruled out of fear cody and Derek worked more of the kim spradlin angle they won everyone over through being liked by their castmates and it shows combined they won 16 of 18 jury votes with their wins although amusingly the two they lost went to Cody anyway on Big Brother 16. They both instituted the onion-like alliance structure, kind of like the uh, Wi-Fi bar symbol on your phone, which became the meta for many seasons after, where they were at the core of the onion and then were insulated with other players forming the outer layers. Each player in the structure was working for Derek or Cody or both in the case of one season, and as the numbers dwindled, so too did these layers. And when everyone was gone, the only ones left remaining were them two. And it needs to be said that a lot of other players have tried to copy this and they have failed. Throughout most seasons after Big Brother 16, this structure just didn't hold up. Cody and Derek managed these alliances through charm, tactical awareness, and comp wins. A perfect trifecta, they kept their cool and thought through each stage of the game, setting themselves up against any potential coups, such as Derek forming a fake alliance with Nicole and Hayden on Big Brother 16, or Cody winning over Enzo in the Cold War against Tyler on BB22. Derek had K Caleb, Frankie, Christine, and Cody at Enzo, Nicole, and Memphis. And really, when it comes to most powerful winners, this is all you can ask for. Incredibly dominant from start to finish, and only because Derek did it first and on his first try and also got Cody to take the L for him, I have Cody at number two and Derek at number one. How about the Hitman? <laughs> dude, you don't see it coming. Dude, the Hitman? You just got whacked. I love it, dude. All right, take notes, America. I wanted to be the best strategic, physical, and social player in this house. And this isn't a street fight. Right. This is a chessboard. And we're moving chess pieces. I had three final twos by day two. You and I are like ride or die. Bro, <laughs> that's what we should call ourselves. The commission. The commission. I'm essentially the reason that this house flipped upside down this week, so it's funny to sit at the kitchen table and watch everyone throw each other under the bus. You got Nicole, Frankie, Zach, they're throwing out alliances, who was working with who, and I'm sitting there going, uh-huh, yep, that sounds about right. Thank you very much, perfect. Anything else? Despite the fact that I was a huge threat and had a ton of power in this game, I managed to never see the block once all season. You, Frankie, you, Cody, that's a title fight. Yeah. But you don't see many title fights in here because people aren't stupid. You take the person you're going to win against. During my last season, I won the final HOH and decided to take Derek with me to the final two. This time, there is no way there's anyone getting in the way of me winning that money. And that, people, is how you win $500,000. I'll see you at the finale. Congratulations, Cody. You are the winner of Big Brother All-Stars. Congratulations, Derek. You are the winner of Big Brother. Hitman. Mm. We got this. Hell dude. yeah. And that is my top five most powerful Big Brother winners. So the question now is, do you agree? Do you agree with my top five? Is Derek number one? Is there someone I snubbed? A big, powerful thank you to my patrons for all your support. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to say yes to joining every Mega Alliance floated your way, and I will see you in the next one once I sit and ponder why nobody's invited me into their Mega Alliance. Wait. What the heck? Like, you, uh, it's obvious. Try to shrink our team down, boom, obvious what it is. I have a strong group in the house with my newbies, and I'm starting to bring some veterans into the fold. Trust me, I'm going to have no problems with getting everyone on board and getting Paulie out of the house this week. I observe. Yeah. Everyone got up, gave him a hug. Oh, she didn't get up. Except the one person. This man is so full of himself. Sit back like a hawk. And, uh. The funny thing is, Everyone in this room knows who the roll kill winner is, except for Jose. The only thing I can do to get through this painful conversation is just agree with Jose, tell him that he's right, and say, Jose, I wish I could be just like you when I grow up. Like, don't make a poor movie if you can't handle the pressure. Dun, dun, dun.